What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going over some new arrivals and uh, some stuff that's coming soon to Blade HQ. Now, um, I'm record you're seeing this a couple of days in the future, right? So, some of this stuff may have changed. There might be new stuff that I'm not going over. In any case, if you're wondering to yourself, Metal Complex, why would I sit here and listen to your commentary when I could simply go to Blade HQ and look at this page myself? You're right, <laughs> as you always have been. I'll link it right at the top of the description so that you can go check out the coming soon pages and the new arrivals pages yourself so you can see what's going on. But like I said, it's likely been updated since I did this video. So check it out, see what's going on. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, clearly we're looking at uh, new Malibus. Um, yeah, this one, the Malibu, I made a community post about it. If you're not subscribed to me, subscribe. I make community posts about these things that people want, right? Hopefully some of you got this knife off my post. Um, but uh, this is the new textured Protec Malibu. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's more expensive than the other one. Yes, I I, I agree. It, it's a little bit, the price is a little bit high. The price is a little bit high on everything right now. It just kind of sucks, right? Um, still really cool though. I like the texturing. And then this black one uh, has yet to be released at the time of this recording. It's even more expensive and therefore exactly $20 more frustrating. Um, it's still something that's, this is one of those things, it, it's going to sell out, right? It's just going to. So, you know, if you're if you're interested in, in something, right, and you're frustrated with the price, I get it, but it seems like everything's just going to get more and more and more expensive. So, you know, it's like we're at a crossroads. You either get it now or you don't get it at all and you just go, you know, we, we look at some other things, right? Um, that's That's kind of how I... Look at this stuff. If it gets to a point where I'm like, it's going to be too high for me, um, then I just change, you know, switch gears and I, I go to something else. But sitting and dwelling, oh, that's not really my, that's not my forte. Um, so these, uh, this, this guy perhaps is coming soon. Don't know when. I have no idea. Um, but there you go. Let's go into, we're going to do new arrivals first and then I'm going to do the rest of the coming soon page. Heretic Nephilim. Okay, TNP. Uh, Nothing Fancy Fly and Flytanium are doing uh, an interesting um, Victorinox Swiss Army Cadet. Those are kind of cool. They're kind of cool. I like Nothing Fancy. That's kind of neat. Uh, I know. I know. Sorry, traditional community. I'm sorry. I wish that I cared more. If it's not a Gek 15... I just don't, I'm, I just don't like it. Sorry. Uh, the Bear Ops, uh, bold action, this or that. This is the one that I was looking at with Ray. Uh, by the time you guys are seeing this, if you, I, I did, uh, I did Ray from everybody, Everyday City Carry. I did his podcast. Um, it's, it should be up actually on his channel. We talked about this knife. I think this is pretty cool. 14 to 20 at end, but it's over a hundred dollars. Um, USA made. Did you know that? Here. USA made, apparently, right? Considering, you know, the prices on everything else, 2022, 14T28N, it's pretty good sized little US auto. I I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm interested to, I've not handled it. Looks good on paper. Interested to, to check, to take a look at it. I've got a few, actually, the Bear Ops stuff. All seems to be reasonably priced and probably competing with the Kershaw Launch series knives which are also automatic and in the same, you know, price arena. Uh, the Hinder Emmet fixed blade. That is a wonderful fixed blade. For those of you seeking an awesome fixed blade, check that one out. The new Ferrum Forge Stinger. Um, they're, you know, they're a bit pricey. I don't know. It's not bad. It's not bad. A lot of people think Nitro V is like exclusively a budget steal. I get, every time I hear that, <laughs> every time I hear that. Remember, there are knives now in 20 CV, which is an analog to M390 for under $100. We have got to stop, you know, packing materials into specific price parameters. It just doesn't make sense. There are too many, you know, uh, examples out there that just rip that thought process apart completely. I like Nitro V. I think it's an awesome awesome steel. And I wasn't fully aware 
of how good it was until I started carrying and using it. Um, anyways, mm, some more Paragon Warlocks. I have, you know, I've, I've gone from thinking that this was super cringe Mall Ninja to being like, yeah, it's kind of neat. And then to being like, okay, I, <laughs> I actually really want one now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Glow Rhino Para 3 scales. That's kind of cool. So they have the little tritium deals in there. You don't have to charge those. They just glow all the time. That's kind of cool. I like that. Moving on here. This is a weird guy. Buck and Bear Thunderbird. Okay. Seen the Wingman EDC slash Dustin Turpin Jet all over the place. That's a good looking knife. Or at least an interesting one. A much better looking knife and one that I'm honestly substantially more interested in is this guy. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, that is a very nice looking, very nice size. Look at that. 7.75 inches, 3.25 inches on the blade length. Three inch cutting edge. The blade to handle ratio. Oh. Um, eh, I, who cares? <laughs> I like it the way it is. It looks awesome. Uh, CPMS 35VN, titanium, yeah, looks, uh, this looks great. I, my biggest issue with the sheep's foot, uh, I'm sorry, the sheep dog, was the fact that it had a flipper for so long. The non-flipper versions of those are really cool. Um, now you can get non-flipper, non, non-flipper, non-flipper uh, Vanguard series variants for less money, um, but the titanium one does look cool. There's the cyber thing, the Kaiser cyber truck knife. Um, super weird. I have one of those coming. I, I really want to check those out. That was the resilience. What was this? It says it's out of stock. People just couldn't wait to get their hands on a $117 Spyderco resilience lightweight. Oh, um, it, the problem here for me is that it's, I, I mean, like, you know, there are lots of knives that are made in China that I'm interested in. It's just this line from Spyderco, percentage-wise, has got to be the most, I mean, as far as, not materials, but like the way it's all put together. I've just never been super impressed with the fit and finish on these things. Um, and uh, I've kind of, I've kind of glass half fold it in, uh, in past reviews, but it's just like, wow. This one's all right. I've got this one here, the Predatout which apparently is for everybody, like literally everybody was like, I Googled it and it means ready for anything. <laughs> of course, they didn't say, they didn't say they Googled it. They just, they just, you know, they get, the, the impression they wanted to leave was, um, I'm fluent in French and here's what that means. You Googled it. Don't give me that. Like 400 people were like, <laughs> Cracked me up. No, I'm kidding. I do appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you using Google for me. That's real nice. Save me the time. Um, it is a, you know, it's nothing new, but it's just another good, uh, like well-made frame lock from concept for a reasonable price, right? They're not going too crazy with their prices yet. So if you're looking for that, you know, bearing action, titanium frame lock, you know, high quality, everything centered and locks out correctly, all that, you know, concept I think is going to have your back there. Some of these PMP knives also look pretty good. Um, I'd like to see what the steel is on the N690. Mm, um, eh, it's okay. That's an okay steel, right? It's another composition. It's just N690 is an ingot steel. So there is no powder process, um, which is... It doesn't, it's it's not like, a lot of people will be like, S30V is a budget steel now, and, uh, you know, what's the new, Magna Cut is now, the okay, but, but really there is like a more, you know, powder form steels, generally speaking, cost more to produce than ingot form steels, even if it is an ingot form, like a premium ingot for, form steel. I, I think N690 has a pretty fine grain structure to begin with, but I don't think it's that it's not a super expensive steel to create, as far as I understand. So sometimes when I see that in a in this sort of price territory, I kind of, eh, you know, <laughs> like it's really cool when we can get powder form steels like 20 CV for under a hundred bucks sometimes, right? Did QSP do that recently? QSP did that with M390, which is the same thing, right? Um, but then it's like, well, wait, like, come on now. PMP knives. 
This is uh, this is uh, made in China, right? What do we got here? Bowler N690, uh, G10. Nothing real special going on here. QSP does. I'm pretty sure it's like Micarta and M390, or maybe titanium and M3. I can't remember what they did. Um, pretty inexpensive. So I don't know what the excuse is for this. There's nothing special going on in terms of manufacturing quality, which is what I'm generally looking for there, right? Um, cause the materials can kind of, that, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily dictate price. Anyway, sorry, we got stuck on that. Um, what were these? The Ferrum Forge Gent. Yeah. Okay. Are these still S35? Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad at all. But it's small. Mm. Small knife equals small price. Small knife, small price. Big knife, big price. <laughs> so pay 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 double for a um, for an XL Voyager in FRN from Cold Steel, right? By that logic. Well, no, I mean it's not what I'm saying. I just um, the Laconico Keen is back. Why are all of these drop knives suddenly here? Oh, is this a lefty? <laughs> That's kind of neat. Okay, lefties. People are way too hung up on like my machine gun mocking my audience right now. If you're new to my channel, I've been doing that for four years. He sure mocks his audience a lot. I don't think that's, that's not a good way to, to grow. <laughs> why are all these uh, why are all these drop uh, things here the crux all the ferrum a lot of the old you know, classic ferrum forge stuff um I I wonder if blade HQ like acquired a bunch of stuff it's like all the drop stuff um I'm going to guess this is leftover from something. And Blade HQ must have acquired it. I would pick this stuff up while you can. It, this this is stuff that I haven't seen for a couple of years. Um, and I'm going to guess that when it's gone, it probably won't come back. But I don't know. What is this? Oh, Straub Compound. I was like, what, what is this? A bar of soap? Um... These are uh, chroma scales. Chroma scales. Oh, it says polymer. Uh, I thought maybe it was like aluminum or something. I thought that was gonna be green blocks. Are these like like Legos? That's kind of neat. And they're forty bucks. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Um, let's see here. Best deck airstream. More weird, um, weird stuff from, uh, but like, it's fine. I mean, I'm sure it works. I'm just saying like best X non, um, collab stuff. <laughs> like when it's a designer sending something to best deck and they make it for me, it, it, it usually is pretty, pretty good. But when best deck designs their own stuff, it's really weird. Um, all right. Wow. That's the least expensive. Oh no, that's not the same thing. This is an ADO, a boot dagger for twelve hundred dollars. Yikes! Um, custom combat troodon in. Is this one of those steel? I bet it's steel frame. Let's look. I'm just curious. I know people are like it's five grand. Why are you even looking at it? Uh, no, it's aluminum. <laughs> I mean, okay, so it does have some cool. Um, inlay like what hold on i just want to see can i not zoom into the apparently not okay this is an inlay is what i'm saying and then there's like copper in there too that's neat it's in here and it's special screws and a special you know a special 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 some of these um you know i get like where the price comes from, but, oh, it is mirror finished. Okay, it is mirror finished, I was gonna say. 
Uh, Marfion does probably the best mirror finish I have ever seen. So that's something. 5K is a lot though, right? Are you going to get something completely and totally unique that nobody else can have? I mean, yeah, right? Uh, unless they make more of that same one. But uh, that's that's just a lot of money, right? Some Eclipse scales, 3.5 inch Eclipse. Um, coyote and black, gray and black. This looks like it's blue and black. It's gray and black. I've owned this scale before and it looks really nice. I also like the uh, toxic green and black. I think that looks good too. This Glow Rhino Lightbringer looks very interesting um, because it is a Ferrum Forge collab. Uh, 8.125 inches overall Nitro V, $149. Um, it looks like it's got a build that's very similar to... Oh, did we have some glow picks? Yeah, some tritium there. It's kind of cool. Uh, build looks real similar to, you know, like something you might get from Sabibi. So I feel like the price is pro. What well, says country of origin, China, USA? <sighs> Come on. Come on. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> Let's just go ahead and say China. Price is probably a little bit high on that, but I do like that one. I am interested. By the way, I'm still looking for stuff for review. Check out my uh, community post on uh, YouTube to see. It says, uh, wanted for review February 2022. This is one of them too. Acton on Verba, uh, the Z400. Interested in checking out that one. Uh, but yeah, please check out that list of stuff. See if there's anything on there that you've got you wouldn't mind uh, loaning out. Country of origin is the Czech Republic. That is the very first time that I have ever seen that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Sleipner, 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 okay. Nine inches, that is a way bigger knife than I thought it was. Um, yeah. Not a big fan of the wire clip. That's really random and out of place. Um, but everything else, <laughs> nine inches with a 3.85 inch cutting edge and it weighs 3.84 ounces. Um, that's interesting. 151 bucks. That kind of looks, that kind of looks cool. I like that. It's an all black one. I've got this, the Mikkel Willemson, uh, button lock from concept S35 VN, 139 bucks. I think that's in a good spot. More stuff from concept. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is just hilarious. <laughs> If you, uh, you remember what happened with like the, um, the Kaiser XL Sheepdog. It was just ridiculous. It was just insane. That thing was 100, I think it was 105 bucks. G10, 154 CM, just hilarious monster cleaver. It's essentially the same thing that's going on with this guy. The Concept Knives XL Corvid, 154 CM, nearly nine inches. It's huge. It weighs, uh, 8.4 ounces. Um, this is a $78 knife and it's just fun. Um, for those people who feel like they want to carry this and be serious about it and you come up with some circumstance where this is going to give you an advantage. Okay, sure. You know, have fun, knock yourself out. Not really be, be careful with it. Uh, but for everybody else who kind of understands what's happening here, this is really fun. It's just a fun thing. Um, so I would recommend that just for, just to flip it and have a smile on your face while you whatever, watch Netflix, right? Um, let's see, what the heck is going on here? Brighton Blades United Keychain Framelock Knife Blue Heart. All right, um, there's a lot of little dingly danglies on there. <laughs> Blade material, stainless steel. You know what, though? I mean, it's 20 bucks, but then again, it's probably $19 overpriced. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see here. Seen the Mido. Oh, they did one in purple. That's cool. Purple and black looks good together, I think. 
what's this glow rhino this is um that's actually really useful the glow rhino polycarbonate um tritium tritium glow fob that's a super cool i have uh tritium on my um my uh, uh what the heck is it here it's right here um it's a uh, Rovivon. I've got a titanium Rovivon uh, flashlight on my keychain. I love it. It's USB rechargeable. But I bought the version that had two uh, tritium files in the back of it. And I can always see my keys. So then I can find my flashlight. So then I can turn my flashlight on so I can find the key that goes in my front door. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I love that. Definitely. So I think tritium is a good thing to keep on your keys since it glows all the time and it does not require light to be charged. Protec, uh, SBR fixed. It's probably a pretty good fixed blade. What's the uh, steel on this? All right. I think that's probably a bit high. It's USA, but okay. Uh, these are the mini Corvids and they are so much fun. I almost recommend that anybody who picks up the XL Corvid, you should pick up the Mini. <laughs> just just so you can laugh at the price difference or the, the size difference. And if not, you know, the other way around, if you want to pick up the Mini, you should pick up the XL. This is the one that I've got here. I'll eventually give this away. Um, I gave the big one away to um, uh, a patron. But uh, <laughs> these are so fun. The... the, um, the Overall length when it's open is less than four inches. This teeny tiny little thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it actually does have a great detent. Uh, quality on it's very good. It's just funny. Um, let's see. Mini Accipiter in aluminum. Hang on. We have a bit of an unsung hero here. Wow. What? Oh, that looks really nice. Ah, look at that. It's green aluminum, 154 cm, 6.75 inches with a 3 inch blade for 65 bucks. Well, that looks pretty nice, concept. I think that, that seems like something that might fly under the radar a bit. There's another one there. If you don't want to go with aluminum, you can go in with uh, green micarta. That looks kind of cool. There's your Vanguard Sheepdog. Uh, with the line, you know, like the non-flipper, those are, those are great. And I think those are also 154 CM. No, they're CPM 10 V. What? What? Okay. Um, yeah, grab that. Uh, <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, for 90 bucks. Holy crap. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do they have more of those? Oh, yes. Yes, they do. Ooh. There we go. Right there. Hold on. I didn't know about this. Oh, nice. Oh, that's real nice. Yeah, I'd recommend picking one of these up. Um, that's that's going to be a nice kind of almost all-purpose use it for whatever, you know. That's cool. We're into the Huskies. Look at this. Is that a frag titanium? Yeah. Man, that's cool. This is why you dig. This is why you don't stop at the first couple of pages. Um, we have a frag titanium uh, QSP Penguin in 154cm for 109 bucks, which I'm also the fragtanium. Oh, clever. <laughs> that's just, they got like a big long table full of people all like with their, like, you know, their fingers together, pondering. What should we call it? <laughs> Jeff from accounting's like, Fragtanium? <laughs> okay, sorry. He laughs at his own jokes. He, I wonder if he knows that. I do. Um, QSP, Hawk Liner. The reason I'm going so far back is because it's been a long time since I've done, we're on page 14. Should we go into the, let's go to the new, the coming soon page. Cause I think we've seen a lot of this stuff and I'm just kind of going on and on and on now. Okay. Some ballast songs. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not concerned um, with ballast songs or the Agus AT spring assisted Tanto. Sorry. No. Um, what is this? Now, hold on a sec, Sog. 
What do we have here? Song one zero one zero. <laughs> wow, cool, right? Uh, XR lock knife, white aluminum, white aluminum, black chrome. I thought that looked kind of like a mirrory kind of thing. I wonder what the pre black chrome CPM S thirty five VN drop point blade with a titanium nitride finish. Um, that's actually kind of neat. Ambidextrous. This looks like a cool knife. Um, I just, I'm a little bit nervous about the price. Where's it made? Where's it made? Huh. Okay. All right. Have to keep my eye out for that one. That looks in MSRP's 277. So that's going to be a high, close to 200. I'm guessing maybe right at 200. I don't know. Street price. Ooh, ooh, there's a whole bunch of fancy little, fancy ones. Look at there. Okay. And we get a much better look at that black chrome finish. Guys, take your pictures at the same angle so we can see this <laughs> reflectivity. Um, this this does look nice. It, it does. All right. Oh, oh hey. Um, okay, I'm kind of, I, I am interested in that. That looks, that looks kind of cool. Uh, Sog Altair. There's one with a better blade to handle ratio for people who are super bothered by that. MSRP is much less ex less expensive, but I'm guessing that the um, blade steel. No, CPM 154. Okay, that probably be, that looks like a decent one. Is it is it assisted? <laughs> Hold on. Secure XR lock, swappable landed, blah blah blah. It doesn't say anything about it being assisted. Did, but you know it's sog so it might be you might need to have a spring why um case 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 every time i do this people are like no kate you got it but i love case. it's okay i know that there's lots of people who collect case knives i'm sure they're good quality um i believe you i'm just not i'm sorry i'm just not interested um oh my god Anybody who's interested in case knives, there's a lot coming, like a lot more, because there's always a lot of case knives. Oh my gosh, there's a lot. Viper knives turn lockback. Viper knives. Mm, M390, okay. Right? People keep trying to catch me. He says not to... He says not to put certain blade steels in a certain price parameter, but then he lights up at certain price parameters with M390. Combination of things. I still value certain steels at, at certain prices, right? My point is, we got to look at other things like country of origin, Italy. Um, and then if I could handle it, you'd want to know fit and finish. Why is the pivot pixelated? What does... Uh, so this area is very clear. We can see what's going on here. And then this area, for some reason, is extremely pixelated. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Okay. Well, it does. Uh, I wonder if like they had carbon fiber scales on it and they were like, oh, we're actually not going to do that. So they <laughs> pixelated it so you couldn't see. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, kind of looks uh, interesting. Of course, Viper. What am I saying? Viper. Um, that's who did this. The um, the the Viper Storm, like the 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 Hinder collab. Dumb. They actually did a great job with that. So I'm guessing that the quality there is pretty good. Are all of these pixelated? Yeah, they all are. What what is going on there? That's so weird. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, from what I remember of the, the quality on the, um, the Viper Storm that I handled, pretty cool. Viper Onzo, some more, lots of interesting Viper-y things. Uh, some titanium, mm, okay. Ontario Camp something or other, Ontario, this is kind of cool. <laughs> Sharpened pry bar. There we go, we got a... 
Skinner, Ontario Rat 3 Skinner fixed blade. We have this, oh my God, monstrosity. But, you know, for, for uh, it's a caper. So for caping, <laughs> I'm kidding. I have no idea what that, right? There's the uh, reverse Tanto black Malibu textured for, I'll just go ahead and say it because everybody else is going to, too much money. Um, it is, but like, you know, if it was 240, I'd be like, yeah, it's all right. So you got to ask yourself, like, is whatever you think, however much you think it's overpriced, like if you think it should be at 200, is $80 enough to keep you from wanting it forever? Because it's only going to go higher, right? So you have to ask yourself like 80 bucks. That's, that's where it is. If you, if you think it's at 200, right? Or whatever you think it's at is 80 bucks enough for me to go, no, that's it. I'm just never going to have it. Right. And then if no, then you can just move on with your life. Hogue Ballista. What? We need pictures. Pictures coming soon. Ooh. Yes. What? Uh, what is this? Why does this look different? We must. This is looks to be. Is this a rendered image? I think it is. Um, okay, but it appears to be a, um, it's a SOCOM Bravo. So these are the ones that are made in China by Reich. There it is. Look, look at it. There it is right there. It's, it, this exists. This is here, right? You can't complain this away. You can only buy it or not buy it. It, it is here, right? There it is. It's coming. Um, M399 inches. I own one of these. The quality is absolutely spectacular. Um, titanium carbon fiber. It doesn't does say anything about the finish. The finish is stone washed, which is different because the one that I have, the one that you, you know, got through Microtech originally, they were blasted. Um, so this is stone washed and it looks to have a carbon fiber pivot collar. I imagine this is one of many variants we'll see. Um, with this knife. Uh, so anybody like wanting to get one and you don't want to go through the whole email thing with um, Microtech, right? Apparently there are some different ones coming to retailers and there were probably, there's probably, you know they're going to do like a shadow one. There's going to be like an all black one. It's it, definitely, 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 definitely. They'll do like special runs of these with, you know, anodized titanium hardware and they'll do one with like a, I'm sure they'll like mirror polish it and charge us eight hundred dollars for it or whatever but yeah so those are there and coming apparently um condor oh, condor dark lore uh, dark lore the lore of this knife is dark it has a bleak past <laughs> what is wrong what is wrong with me okay <laughs> um uh, what else is coming soon that looks at least kind of interesting nothing 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 these look okay these look all right these mkm maxima uh the mkm um not these but the the other mkm uh was pretty good I liked that one. I thought that was a super underrated knife. So the quality on these, and I handled it. The, the fit and finish, the quality on these is, is good. MKM did a good job. Um, the Buck Highline is surprisingly a decent knife. <laughs> um, so there you go. There's more of those coming soon. What is this? It's like kitchen cutlery for ninjas. Uh, the Buck hook set. Okay. Calm down, Buck. <laughs> uh whoa wow cold steel holy moly the leatherneck bowie man that is a freaking sword the lynn thompson leatherneck oh my gosh <laughs> oh man get ready to ring out your pants everybody the uh the lynn thompson leatherneck fixed bowie blade is here Hundred and seventy one ninety five for fifteen inches of or ten ten and a half inches of D two steel signed by Lynn Thompson himself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, does it say what does it say? German D two. 
Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I like Lynn, I like Lynn Thompson. I I, uh, I could watch those um, I could watch those videos all day. What do we got here? Hey, eighty ten lights. Look at that. I didn't know they were doing that. Okay. It's Austin A. <laughs> Sorry, that's my imitation of people being upset about the fact that it's Austin A for ninety two ninety five. Um, yeah, so I've been using the um the um eighty twenty point five. Like I think the price is a bit high on that for. Again, you know, the, all the way around the manufacturing quality and all of the other elements that matter, you know, quite a bit more than just the materials by themselves. But speaking on, you know, OS 10A, I think it's pretty good. I don't really have a problem with it. It stayed plenty sharp. It's super easy to sharpen. I've not oiled it or had to do anything. I mean, honestly, it's it's pretty good. It's okay. Um, I don't know. I the, the thing is, is that I constantly talk crap on VG10 how much I don't like it. Apparently, OS 10A is extremely similar to VG10. So, maybe I just need to stop talking so much crap on VG10. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Um, 92.95. I mean, this is basically an indestructible knife. The 8010. So, making it lightweight, right, with scales that are arguably just as strong. Black GFN, just as strong or stronger than G10. It's just going to feel a bit cheaper. There you go. There's even a Tanto version of it. Holy moly. Cold Steel Verdict. Cold Steel Mayhem. Mayhem. Whenever I uh, um, talk about, uh, whenever I say pocket sword, like, then people get mad at me. <laughs> I, I called the Shiograph F111 a pocket sword, and so many diehard Cold Steel fans came rushing, rushing in. Good sir, good sir. Have you no knowledge of cold steel? No. Good sir, I must tell you about my true pocket sword collection. <laughs> yes, I know who cold steel is. I Yes, I'm aware. Thank you. Wow, look at all these birds. Uh, okay. Look at all those chickens. The uh, uh, Here comes the stovepipe. Speaking of things that are going to make people mad, like, so this here, here's going to be the, like, um, I'm going to play the role of somebody who's mad that this exists and no plans to buy it, even if it was less expensive, right? Um, so here I am being mad about it. And then here's this thing existing. It's going to be here and then it's going to become available and then it's going to sell out no matter how mad I am at it, right? I can, I'm gonna shake my, my fist at this. No, oh, how dare you exist? I'm offended. Meanwhile, the Spyderco stovepipe being an inanimate object is uh, just stoic as ever, not caring. Um, yeah, I mean, is it high? Sure. I did a review on this and uh, I think I think it goes without saying, like it, no, nobody needs to say that the um, design is not comfortable. Um, and I, I mean, I did, I reviewed it and I said this, the design's not comfortable. The blade is not practical in really any way. Um, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's this is more of a collector piece and the price is a bit high. Do I think it's massively overpriced? No, because Manufacturing something like this in Taiwan is expensive, period, right? Uh, and the quality of a Taichung Taiwan Spyderco is vastly, vastly higher. <laughs> it just is, right? The uh, the the best X and the Wii's and the, you know, like the standard production stuff or um, especially your, uh, what's that brand that I don't review because of the, because it's an obnoxious brand? Um I can't even remember them now. Um, yeah, it, it is better. The Spyderco Taichung Taiwan um, manufacturing quality and fit and finish is is better than those brands. It, and you know, but it, it's expensive to do that. So it's just going to be up there. This to me, honestly, it felt more like a three hundred and seventy five dollar knife, right? Um, I think it's almost it's it's close to fifty bucks too high. But you know, that's the thing. I I'm not interested, so I'm just going to move on. You know, 
It's not something I'm interested in. Yo Jumbo, uh, is this the carbon fiber and S90V variant? So there you go. That will, uh, that'll go quick when that finally releases, whenever it's going to release. I think I saw that in the catalog. Um, Hmm, okay. Whole bunch of stuff. Moving on, moving on, moving on. I can't, now I'm not seeing anything that I'm really interested. That's weird. Um, this is all still new though. Hmm. Tucson, uh, oh wait, not Tucson. Tu Tucson, that's the name, sorry. I was sitting here thinking, what is the name of that company that bothers me that everybody's what? Uh, Tucson, yes. Spyderco's Taichung Taiwan knives are higher quality than Tucson knives. Coming from somebody who has handled plenty of both. Um, yes, that's that's my opinion on that. Um, more of these, a whole bunch of these Benchmade knives, these new ones that are coming. These do look interesting. The, the full immunity, <laughs> interesting, autoimmunity. Um, the readout, the shootout, and the gold. This is actually their most interesting gold class in a while, the Mini Osborne gold class. Super expensive, not something I'm interested in, but, um, you know, it looks nice. Look at all these things that I'm... <laughs> People who are here to complain don't know what to complain about first. <laughs> You're just going to have to leave multiple comments. There's just so much to be mad about. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, I've seen this. Okay, we are finally at the end. Wow, this was a long uh, episode here, guys. Um, yeah, okay, there's a lot of new stuff that's really cool. So there's a lot of stuff that's uh, obviously priced a lot higher. Um, but there's also some new, there's some new stuff in here that's priced pretty well, right? So uh, if you are, you know, the stuff that you've been used to buying has gone up in price and you're bothered by that and you know you're frustrated um, perhaps it's, it's time to give somebody else a chance because there are way too many options there are just way too many options out there right now um, for, for people both uh, US made and not um, you know if you're just sitting there like dwelling and like you know rolling around in a pile of your own angry soup um, there's just too many options out there for that uh, that behavior to be justified. So I would urge you to check out some of this other stuff. It looks interesting. I will try to review as much of it as I can. If you own some of this stuff that I am, you know, looking at and thinking is kind of cool and you wouldn't mind loaning it to me for review so I can talk about it, um, that'd be great. Just uh, you can uh, check out my community tab for, um, you know, my uh, I've got my contact info there. So anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Like I said, um, I will link these pages right down below in the description so you can check them out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Middle Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.